All right, hey guys, it's Miss Scott with a video today about relative humidity and how to use a sling psychrometer in order to measure relative humidity. So let's start this uh, quick little video with making sure you, you right there, are okay with what relative humidity is. So you're probably familiar with humidity in that you know it has something to do with how much moisture or water vapor is in the air. Um, basically, the higher the humidity, the more water vapor there is, but this relative humidity is a measurement that we use to express how close the air is to being 100% saturated. All right, so example, if I wake up and I turn on the news and they say it's 100% relative humidity today, that means at this temperature, the air is as saturated as it can possibly be. If I add any more water vapor to it, that is going to fall out as precipitation. Or if the temperature lowers, remember cold air holds less moisture than hot air does, I will have precipitation. All right, so the higher the number, the more water vapor, um, the closer that air is to being, that is to being saturated. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at a sling psychrometer. This is a device um, that we use to measure relative humidity, or we use to calculate it, all right? Um, there are actual sling psychrometers that do not look like this, that are actual legitimate meteorological instruments, but we improvise, and you can make your own at home. All you need is two thermometers, some string, and some gauze or a paper towel. So, this has a dry bulb, which is just a regular old plain thermometer, preferably in Celsius because the table that we're going to use is in Celsius, and a wet bulb. This wet bulb, also in Celsius, has a little yep, paper towel at the end that I've um, tied on there. It's wet. It's not like soaking wet. Obviously, like water's not dripping off of it, um, but it's just there surrounding the bulb of the thermometer. The wet bulb needs to be attached to a string. You can attach this one to a string too, but we're not just because I'm afraid of losing thermometers because I've already done that. All right, so let's look at how we're going to use this device. I'll put steps here on the board. Step one is really easy. You're going to want to measure the dry bulb temperature. All right, so I just take my regular thermometer and I measure what it is. So I'm inside right now, so it's not terribly uncomfortably hot or uncomfortably cold. It looks like I'm right about, make sure you read this at eye level and that it's straight and all that good stuff. 24, I don't know, maybe a little warmer than that. Actually, oh, don't hold the bulb as I just did. Now that's dredging my body heat. Sorry, that happens. All right, so I'm gonna let it, Go back down. It looks like it's about 24 degrees Celsius. All right, so I'm just gonna jot that down. All right, step two, the fun step, you are going to spin your wet bulb thermometer. All right, what I mean by spin, and I'll explain why we're doing this as I demonstrate. Take it, hold it by the string, please, please. Make sure this is attached securely. You don't want this to fly off because these are glass instruments. Um, they are not. They don't have mercury in them, it's a different medium, uh, but still you don't want broken glass. So, you just take it and you just start spinning it like that. So why are you doing this, other than it's fun? What is happening as you spin this through the air? Some of this water on the paper towel that's on the bulb is beginning to evaporate. And when it evaporates, it cools the thermometer up. So, the temperature that I get on this thermometer is gonna be lower. What I'm looking for, how I'm going to calculate relative humidity, is going to be based on how much of a difference is there between the dry bulb and the wet bulb. Okay, so there's no set amount of time you need to do this for, like 30 seconds probably should be more than fine. Um, I have no idea how long I've been doing this for, I haven't been keeping track. Uh, there you go. Again, just make sure everything is secure before you do this. Make sure you're not like hitting anybody or slapping yourself in the face, like nobody likes that. That's not fun. So I think I've spun this around enough, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to look. 
And if you see, oh, it has indeed changed. Wow, that's amazing, Miss Scott. No, it's science. It's science. It's what it is. So it looks like, again, don't hold the ball, you silly goose. That looks like it's about 17 degrees Celsius. So you're going to take those numbers, and now you're going to look at a chart. Yes. Three, you're going to look at your relative humidity table. Now, if you are in my class, your relative humidity table is in your earth science textbook. It is on page 525. If you are not in my class and you are not a student in the great state of North Carolina, or a great place, um, you can look these up. You can just Google them. It's all, it's, it's all going to be the same thing. All right, so I'm going to adjust my camera so that y'all can see that a little bit better. There we go. So, here we go. I can remember everything's reversed. So, on this side, we have our dry bulb temperature. So, I'm going to find 24 degrees. I need a marker or something so you can see. 24 is right there. I'm going to slightly mark that. All right. My wet bulb temperature was 17. You might be saying, well, Miss Scott, that's 17. That's way over there. Is that right? No. This is the difference the depression. So basically, what is the difference between the dry bulb minus the wet bulb? So 24 minus 17, that's 7. 7 degrees Celsius difference. So I'm going to go to 7. I'm actually going to use, let's see if I can get an index card out for this. Make it easier on my life. All right, so 7's right there. I'm going to go down and I want to see where they meet. So that's right there. All right, and I've circled it in crayon right there, we're right below my finger. So that means if my measurements are accurate, the relative humidity in my classroom where I'm making this video right now is 49%. So the air is at 49% moisture capacity. All right, which sounds, which is about reason, which is, bleh, excuse me, which is reasonable for an indoor an indoor location. You can do this. Um, my class, if you're part of Miss Scott's class, you are going to be taking this outside and we're going to measure what it is outside of the school. And we're going to compare that to another, we're going to compare that to the meteorological measurements that they're making for our town. So that is how we use sling psychrometry. That's how you read the tables and what relative humidity is. Um, so if you have any other questions, you can leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah. All right.